Hey guys, welcome back. Frank here. I've got an outdoor project now. So this is a boat trailer that I've had for, well, since 1992. So what is that? 30 years. And it hasn't been used in probably five years and really hasn't had any significant maintenance done on it in 10 or 15 years. So it's been parked down in the backyard for 10 years since 2013. So it needs some work. A tree fell on it uh, in the tornado we had uh, May 2021. So it's broken this light, so I need to replace this light. The tires are dry rotted, so I'm going to pull the wheels off and take them and get the tires replaced. Meanwhile, I'm going to inspect the bearings and the, uh, I think the bearings are probably good because they've been greased and maintained. I've got some broken rollers here. I've got a broken roller and this roller is split. So it probably needs to be replaced. Another roller right there. Might replace that as well. I think these other little rollers are... That one looks like it's bent. That one there. Compared to this one, these two are straight. That one looks like it's bent. Don't know. I guess that happened from the tree that fell on it. Alright. Let's see what else we got. I haven't tested the lights lately we'll have to do that i'll get this one replaced and we'll plug them in and make sure they all work i think i have a replacement fixture for that i have to look and see this tire also dry rotted so we'll take it and get it replaced at the same time winch needs a new strap i actually think i have another strap This has been replaced, so that's working okay. And we'll have to look at the connections here. That certainly needs to be cleaned, if nothing else. All right, so you know, basically falls in you know normal routine maintenance for this trailer. This is for my 16-foot runabout not a big boat has a 60 horse outboard it's so we'll get started we'll do some maintenance on this and uh, get it roadworthy again some jack stands under the rear axle here. This is easier than trying to get the floor jack out here. All right, that worked easier than I expected. <laughs> oh, okay. 
This is easier than I, much easier than I expected. Okay, they all came right off. Just doing them all, getting them all started to make sure that I can get them off. All right. My only complaint about this is that this, these buttons to change the direction are, you know, they're too easy to hit. Uh, I'm going to say the grease is liquefied in there, so we'll wind up. Bearings feel great. There's no play. Well, that's pretty rusted. Have to decide what to do with this. I'm not sure at this point what I'm going to do. I don't really use the trailer much, so I don't want to invest a lot of money in it. So either the PB blaster worked a miracle yeah these are these are bearing buddies which create a pressurized environment for the grease for the for the bearings and again yeah there's no leakage on the back side the rear seal seems to be fine I'm gonna say the bearings are okay on here I mean these springs are rusted but my boat only weighs maybe a thousand pounds well probably tw probably 1500 with the uh, motor okay and okay so I can see the mounting slots here so it goes like this All right, so here's the hardware they give us. All right, so I'm just going to cut these here, and let's. Need a ground. back to here get rid of two extra connections 
fewer connections you have, the less risk of failure. So these are actually adhesive lined uh, connections. So when you shrink the tubing, uh, you can see a little bit of adhesive squeezing out, being extruded out on the wire. So that ensures you have a good watertight connection. And adhesive lined heat shrink is what you should always use on a boat trailer. And even these pieces of heat shrink are adhesive lined and you can see the adhesive extruding out of the end. All right, well that got rid of two extra connections that we had or two other two connections that we had that we don't need. I'm going to put a new plug on here. You know, just a few wires to splice. So let's see. All right, so we got yellow and brown and green and brown. And on our connection here, we've got yellow and brown, green and brown, and the white is ground, so that'll be there. All right, this is the yellow, and this is the yellow-brown.
All right, so I got a battery pack hooked up here, ground to the white one. I've got the hot one to the green, which I think will give me the right tail light. All right, that's on. So it looks like all the lights are working. All right, so there are two, two bolts at each of these locations. There's a 5 8 inch bolt here, which is, both of these have lock nuts on them. This 5 8 inch bolt is the pivot bolt, and the half inch bolt just restricts its movement, and it's loose on there as well. So those are the pivots for these two horseshoe shaped, this horseshoe here, and the one back here that pivot to accommodate the boat as it rolls onto the trailer. So those pivot points are, bolts are replaced. I still need
All right, I'm going to head to the local trailer uh, supply, trailer retailer, trailer retailer, and uh, see about getting a new set of springs. So now I got All right, so we've got the new spring in here. It just slides right in. You bolts. here Make some act as lock nuts. I looked at the saddle that's on, welded to the axle here, and it looks like it's, I mean, it's rusted, but it's still pretty, pretty solid. And, um, I mean, the rest of the axle is has some similar rust, uh, though the hubs feel good. There's, um, you know, no play. They actually feel real good. They may not even require being repacked. So, I mean, they're smooth as silk. All right, so I cut the tops of these bolts off so they wouldn't, if the spring compressed, they wouldn't interfere with the frame, even though I don't think it would ever go that high. Uh, I think these are 1,750 pound rated springs, which are really more than I need, but I think the axle's probably a 3,500 pound or 3,000 pound axle. So you'd want the springs to be something similar to that. Right, let's go around the other side, cut the other spring off and replace it. There's a lot of tension on that. Surprising amount of tension. These are what you call slipper springs. 
there's a bolt at one end here that goes through an eye in the spring and the other end just slides and so that's what we've got at the other end is just a goes through this space here and the existing springs have a hook on the end of them this one's just flat it shouldn't make any difference again that hub feels good it's silky smooth So there's a pin on the underside of the springs which needs to fit in a hole in this saddle and it did engage i felt it when it was partially engaged took the weight off of it I don't know if you can see this, but the ends of this nut are peened in three places so that it deforms the threads basically to create a lock nut, a mechanical lock nut. Even though they give you lock washers. You got to make sure you put the other side of the nut on first. Otherwise, you can't get them started.
definitely nuts you don't want coming undone while you're driving down the road. It would be a little bit of a disaster. It would be a lot of a disaster. Tapping the bottom of the U-bolts to make sure they're in alignment so there's no slack in them that would eventually that would in movement cause them to shift and be loose. got three of these rollers to replace. I've got some new polyurethane rollers. All of these are split. Pretty easy. I don't know if I trust these caps. I'm gonna look at maybe getting replacement ones and taking these off and putting new ones on. Uh, I mean, there really isn't any force knocking them off, but this one's split. And so is that one. Maybe they're supposed to. So these caps, you know, are friction fit. Uh, they just hammer on, not coming off very easily. I'm just going to cut them off. I'm, I'm going to replace them.
Well, that's not good. That's busted. I got some more of this. All right, we'll cut a piece nine and three quarters. All right, so that was easy. Just went in and cut a piece of five eighths inch stock. All right, I need to get this, the caps to put on the ends of these, so I'll have to go to the hardware store. Uh, it's getting late this afternoon. Let's see, it is. It's 5.30. So, cutting the springs off, making a run to the nearest trailer supply store, which is 40, almost 50 miles away, and then back today. Uh, got the springs on, got these three new rollers. So I hit the hardware store in the morning, get those caps, get them on, and we just have a couple more things to take care of and this trailer will be roadworthy. I'm st I have not heard from the tire store on my rims. So hopefully I'll hear tomorrow. All right, this video is getting pretty long, so I'm gonna wrap this up and call this part one. We'll come back, uh, finish up the couple of things here that we've got, this winch strap and put the push caps on the roller shafts and we'll pull the uh, hubs and um, replace the grease seals, inspect the bearings, repack them, put them back on and put the new new tires on, new wheels and tires on. So we'll do all that in the next episode. Uh, repacking the wheel bearings is something you have to do on a regular basis so it'll be good to go through that process. I'll show you how how I do it. So thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you guys on the next one.